the group. Okay, can everybody mute themselves? Hi, welcome. This is Teresa Belcher. I am the founder of Honeymoon Islands, and this is another live show, Travel Tuesdays with Teresa. And today we're really lucky. We're featuring Viking River Cruises. We're going to take you around the world to some of the most iconic rivers around the world. And today I've got Barry Johnston, who is a Viking employee. And he is my BDM, Business Development Manager. So he's going to take you through the presentation today. Welcome, Barry. Oh, thank you so much, Teresa. Looking yeah, forward. Well, you've got the mic. Go for it. All right, let me share my screen, and then we'll make sure everyone can see this, and then we'll go ahead and get started. So I can, we'll just give a couple of seconds, and you all can confirm that you can see the screen there. Yes, I can see. Awesome, perfect. So I'm going to give you just an overview of Viking, where we've come from, what we do, and talk mostly about rivers today. I, I do want to just, while I, our little introduction here, while I talk about what we do at Viking, and Teresa and I have another event planned in a few weeks, so in mid-February we'll do another one of these that's focusing on our ocean ships and expedition vessels. Uh, but we do travel the whole world now. We've been in business for 25 years. And people think of Viking still as river cruises, but we do have eight ocean ships that travel the world, expedition ships too. So as I mentioned on, I think it's Valentine's Day, February 14th, we'll be doing another one of these to talk about our, our products. But we can take it all over the world now. And we've grown from the river side of the business. On the top left, those are river ships in Europe. And we'll be talking about that today. And we'll be talking about the bottom left, which is the Mississippi ship. So that's our river side over on the left hand side of the screen and on the right hand are our small ocean ships which are 930 passengers and our expedition vessels which we'll talk about in a few weeks. So what let's talk a little bit about Viking and who we are, what we do. We've been in business for 25 years. Our owner is Mr. Torsten Hagen who's from Norway. He went to school there, studied physics in Norway, then came to Harvard and uh, it was MBA from Harvard, studied at Harvard, and then went into the shipping business and eventually got into cruise lines, like the old Royal Viking line. If anybody remembers that line from the 70s and 80s, they were purchased by Norwegian in the early 90s. And Mr. Hagen uh, was trying to buy the company, it didn't work out, so he ended up, he was an executive with Royal Viking line, and ended up founding his own Viking brand. So Viking cruises started in 1997 and that was really river cruising and the creation of modern river cruising what we did there it's all small ship focused we've had the same tagline our entire 25 years of business which shows you that we're very focused exploring the world in comfort that's what we want to provide to you at viking and the real viking difference is we are destination focused our ships are amazing you'll be very comfortable on board you'll have great food but the real focus is the is the area that you're traveling through and we'll help you experience it by a, an included tour in every port of call, a long list of optional excursions you can purchase from us. You also have things that we do on board, bringing the destination to you while you're on your ships and that can be a lecture, it can be cooking demonstrations, musical performances, destination performances, singers, that type of thing. So in regional food and regional beverage too, all brought to you uh, during your cruise. So it is just a great way to travel. It's a very comfortable cruise. It's We don't have formal nights. We are adults only, so we're age 18 plus. It is a very comfortable way to see Europe and highly rated too. We've been rated by Condé Nast Traveler and Travel and Leisure Readers as the number one river cruise line out there. And all river cruise lines are great. I'm not going to say anything negative about any river cruise line because I really do think they're a great way to travel and see Europe. I will tell you why I think Viking is a great option and that's because we have been doing it longer. We have more ships, more itineraries, more sailing dates. Uh, we are uh, some efficiency of scale because of our size too. So better offers, better promotions, better ties to the airline industry with some great deals through our Viking Air where we work with Delta, United, American Airlines and all of their international partners on getting you back and forth from Europe. So those are some key reasons I think to book Viking. Now our included values, the things that we have for you on every cruise that you do with us is one short excursion in every port of call. Those are usually in groups of around 24 people 
or so, so very intimate. You're not in this big, massive group of the entire ship going out. Small groups, you're going to have a, a headphone device, an earpiece, that allows you to listen to the speaker. So the tour guide will have a mic and you'll be able to hear the guide perfectly as you go through your tour. That included tour varies in scale and scope. It can be a two and a half to three hour, three and a half hour tour of something um, that's like the city center, the highlight of a city that you're visiting. It can vary and be longer scope too. On our Paris to, to Normandy itinerary, we have an, a 10 and a half hour included tour that goes out to the beaches. So I'll talk a little bit about that and a little bit further on as we get into some of the destinations. All your food's included. There's multiple dining menus. Wine, beer, and soft drinks are included during lunch and dinner, especially coffees and teas are available 24 hours. We include bottled water that's replenished daily right in your cabin. We'll give you bottled water when you're heading out on the, on the ship for the day, too. We have complimentary Wi-Fi. First class hotels, if you choose to do a pre or post extension with us. In-room entertainment, port, port charge of government taxes are going to be included on the invoice that you receive from, from Teresa. So no additional hidden charges there, no nickel and diming when it comes to that. So that's all the inclusive values. Let's talk about what you'll see. So I'm going to go through just some beautiful images of Europe and our river cruising there. We're going to focus on Europe to begin with. And this is Kinderdijk. This is a spectacular UNESCO World Heritage Site in the Netherlands where there are 19 windmills from the 18th century. They're absolutely amazing. Two of the windmills have been restored to how they were 300 years ago. Uh, the others are actually modernized and there are actually millers and their families who still live there. Uh, but you'll go on your included tour out to the to the windmills that are restored, walk through those. There's a beautiful museum here. You'll hear the entire history about the dike system and how that all works to pump water back into the riverbank. Um, there are a couple of optional excursions here, and I think that's the beauty of Viking. So we have the included tour for you, but we have some optional excursions throughout all of our itineraries that you can purchase. Uh, two optional excursions that I really like here are there's e-biking so if you like to see the would like to see the windmills in a little more active experience we do offer e-biking and those are the ones that have the dial up assist so you can you can have the motor help you a little more or you can dial it back and, and get the exercise in yourself we also offer a second optional tour that you can purchase that is seeing the windmills by a historic barge it's a it's a 100 year old barge that actually will go down these small waterways so you can see the windmills from a unique perspective one last optional excursion to do here that you can choose to do which will include the uh, the included tour of seeing the windmills by foot but it'll also take you to a dutch cheese making farm we call it gouda here in the u.s but in in the netherlands they would say howda the g is harder but it's a it's a family farm. It's been a dairy farm for 150 years and they've been making cheese there for the last 50 years. Three generations currently live on the farm and produce the cheese. It's really a, a, it's an experience I've done myself and I, I really enjoyed it. And of course there is cheese to purchase if you'd like to at the end and it's very, it's, it's cheaper here than you'll find it in Amsterdam or in some of the larger cities like Rotterdam. So it's right here directly buying from the cheese maker. Um, some really good, unique flavors of Gouda, too, that you can bring back to the ship with you. So we visit Kinderdijk on many of the Rhine cruises, and then we also visit the Middle Rhine Gorge on almost all of our Rhine cruises, too. And this is, you've always dreamed of seeing the beautiful European castles. This is the section of the river where you're going to encounter that. We're in Germany. Uh, when we're doing this, there are 40 castles in a 40-mile stretch here. This stretch of the river you see here is the Lorelei Rock. Uh, the legend of the Lorelei who would lure sailors to their doom. This was a very dangerous, but going back, you know, to a time before radar and sonar on the vessels, this was a very dangerous turn in the river. Um, so that's how this legend formed over several hundred years ago. Beautiful castles, though. So the gorge is formed by the river, so the plateau is up high above, and, and that's where you'll see these, these castles. Just spectacular views. Our we cruise this area during daylight, so we usually do river cruising in Europe March through December. So if you're doing a December cruise, there could be snow along the, the plateau there. Um, it's, it's beautiful weather during the summer months. Can be quite warm, but very nice to visit here. This is the Marksburg Castle. I'd like to point this one out because 
we actually offer an optional excursion that you can purchase to walk through this castle. So the ship will dock here down at the bank of the river. Those guests who've chosen to, to do this tour will, will take you up by motor coach to the, to the castle itself. You'll walk through, there's over 300 steps. The original stones were laid here. Construction started in the 11th century, so a really, really old castle and was never captured in battle. It's easy to see why, because it's up on this big prominent hillside. Uh, further down the Rhine, we have some cruises that will travel all the way to Basel, Switzerland, and you'll stop on those cruises in Strasbourg, France. And you look at these half-timbered houses and you think a little bit about, well, are we in Germany? But we're actually in France. This area is called Alsace. And Alsace is a region of France that's kind of, over the last 300, 400 years, it's gone back and forth several times between controlled by the country of France and controlled by the country of German, Germany. But the, the inhabitants here are kind of a, a little bit of both. Um, but it's been France for the longest period of time. And, and so this French is the language here, but the, 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 the architecture has that German feel to it. Some fantastic food here. We have an included walking tour. Strasbourg is also known for its beautiful cathedral that has one spire. Uh, construction was never completed on the second spire, so it's quite unique. Um, another cruise, Paris in the Heart of Normandy. This is probably our fourth most popular eight-day cruise. We see this uh, very popular for people who would like to see the big city of Paris, and our ship is the closest docking location to the Eiffel Tower. It's literally an eight minute walk from the ship to the Eiffel Tower. Uh, and this itinerary that we do here features where you are, your ship is docked in Paris on the day that you arrive overnight. And then on the day before the cruise ends, we've arrived back in Paris and dock overnight again. So you have, have two full days there to explore Paris. We have an included tour that will give you some highlights, some optional excursions that will take you out to Versailles if you'd like to do that, or to, to the, um, the di district of the, of the Impressionists over there. And then also we will visit on the included tour the, the Champs-Élysées, that will go past the, the Musée d'Orsay, Notre Dame, uh, the Opera House. Uh, that overnight, those days that we are there docked in the same space, gives, space gives you that great time to go off and do some self-exploration which I think is a real highlight of river cruising, what I always do when I travel on the rivers. It, it, when you're looking at museums like the Louvre and the Musée d'Orsay, those are museums you want to do individually because you want to spend your time seeing what's most important to you. So we, those, those days are a great time to do those, those big museums like that so you can explore at your own pace. On this itinerary, we're heading out towards the Atlantic, uh, towards the Channel, we are going to stop in Gevernay, uh, which the ship is actually docked on the Roche-Guillon, which is on the slide here, but we do visit Gevernay and Monet's garden. So you get a chance to see what he painted in so many of his amazing pictures that we know about the, ja the Japanese garden and, and the beautiful flowers there. This is an opportunity to see those, all of that in close and personal. And of course, a highlight too is heading to the Dile beaches. And I teased that a little bit earlier that we have that this tour is included. It's no additional cost. It is a, an 11 hour tour that we do down to Normandy and we'll uh, take a walk on Omaha Beach. So you actually get to set foot on Omaha Beach. I have a vial of sand. Let me find it here on my desk. I have a vial of sand that I have um, I brought back from D-Day. Well, I don't know where it's at. I'm sorry. That, that's a little distracting, but I thought I'd grab it and show it to you, but I don't know what... It must have fallen down, but uh, it's a it's a really incredible just to walk on the on the on that shore, shore there. Uh, Omaha was the bloodiest of the beaches, and the American losses were highest there. We do also go up to the cemetery, and we'll do a replaying ceremony. Uh, you'll hear taps played. You can walk through the the, the gardens of stone there uh, at your own pace, and you'll see Star of David's and crosses. Uh, it's uh, women and men uh, service member buried from all over um, uh, their service all over all over um, Europe during World War II are buried here. Uh, just really, really an incredible moving, moving day. Um, and on the uh, Eastern Europe, so we, we're over on the Danube now. So we do quite a few cruises over in Eastern Europe on the Danube. This is the German city of Passau. Passau is a, a town where three rivers come together. And I like to show this image 
more to show you how close the rivers are to the center of town. The, the rivers were the means of transportation for centuries before roads were the quality we could move goods around uh, there in Europe. This is how people move things, uh, armies moved up and down the river. So we dock right here on the quay and pass out. You'll have an included tour that takes you through the town. The church at the top left, that one with the three green domes, that's St. Stephen's Cathedral here. It has the largest pipe organ in Europe. Well, in the included tour, just before the, the, con the daily concert takes place. So you can purchase a ticket and watch that concert if you'd like. It's about a 30 minute performance where you can hear the, the massive organ playing. Um, let's continue a little bit further down the river and we'll stop in Krems, Austria. This is a monastery and uh, Gottwig Abbey is the name of the abbey here. So it has been around since the 11th and 12th century. It was very important in the Habsburg Empire and this fresco that you see over on the right is a really large fresco in one of the buildings that you'll get a chance to see. This is one of the, the Habsburg emperors here in the center on that gold chariot. Uh, he is um, uh, being the emperor is right in the center of that giant fresco because the churches were very much allied with the, with the Habsburg Empire and they both helped fund each other, so to speak. Um, We'll sail down the Vakal Valley, which is a beautiful spot on the Danube. It's a 19-mile stretch with vineyards on either side of the river here. Lots of great white wine is grown in this region of Austria. This is the village of Dernstein, and we do offer an optional experience where you can bike to Dernstein if you'd like to do those e-bikes again that I mentioned earlier. Uh, I've done that. That's a quite fun. It's a very easy ride, mostly flat for, along the riverbank here. Uh, to arrive at Dernstein. This castle ruin you see in the foreground is where Richard the Lionheart was held ransom. Uh, when he was coming back to, to Western Europe from the Crusades, he was passing through this part of Europe and was a competing king in this area, grabbed him and held him ransom for a year until uh, that ransom could be paid and then he was, uh, was let go and released and allowed to head back to, to Western Europe. And of course Vienna, Vienna is the music of Mozart, Strauss, the Habsburg Empire was centered here, spectacular churches. Uh, St. Stephen's Cathedral is the largest. This is the Winter Palace of the Habsburg. It's parliament and other government office buildings now. We'll walk through this area. We do offer some optional excursions in Vienna, several actually, that uh, can take you from everything to Schronbrunn Palace, which was the, the summer palace of the Habsburgs, to an authentic Austrian Perigan dinner up in the hillside, vineyards, restaurants, combinations that are up in the city limits. We have a partnership with the Vienna Boys Choir. When they do have a performance in town, we, you'll see that populate for your journey. And you could purchase optional tickets to see the Vienna Boys Choir in person. Also, a Mozart and Strauss concert is offered optionally, too. So lots of choices and things to see in Vienna. And then to Budapest. Uh, um, most of our, our Danube cruises are going to stop in Budapest, giving you an opportunity to see this dual city. Uh, there is the Buda Castle, which is just to our right. This is Fisherman's Bastion. Matthias Church is to our left. And looking down at the Parliament Building, we dock right here near this point where you can walk across the chain bridge. Once it's open, the chain bridge is still under repair. It's been in repair for about three years. Uh, everything I'm reading is saying that it will finally be finished this year, so hopefully soon. <laughs> but we will take you across to both sides of the river on your included tour, and we have many optional tours there in Budapest, too. Now, I talked about when we cruise on the rivers of Europe. It's primarily March through December. If you are looking for the spectacular Christmas markets, that's going to be December of each year. And you'll find all of our itineraries that are on the Rhine and the Danube, we offer operate the most popular ones as a Christmas version. It's really focused on Christmas and holiday activities as well as visits to the markets. We'll have some included tours that take you to the markets to talk a little bit about that and about ample time for you to have a chance to go through the markets on your own. Some of the cities offer multiple markets, so we won't get to all of them, like Vienna has four markets. We'll get to uh, one or two of those, and there'll be multiple markets in Budapest. Uh, everything from small towns to large cities have these Christmas markets along the Rhine and the Danube. 
So our three most popular river cruises, just to point out what those are. These are, this is an eight day. This is probably our, our the highest percentage of first time river cruisers doing an eight day. They do this Rhine getaway and that's gonna be Amsterdam in the Netherlands to Basel, Switzerland. You can do this in either direction. We'll have identical sister ships. One leaves Amsterdam, one leaves Basel. They leave on the same day, pass through on, on day four there and end in the opposite direction. I'll show it to you on a map so you can see the countries we're visiting. We're visiting the Netherlands, we're visiting Germany, we're visiting France when we go to Strasbourg, and we're doing Switzerland. We offer pre and post extensions, so if you would like to come in early or stay later, you can book a hotel stay through us that usually have an included tour and some optional tours you can purchase. So we'll do those in Lake Lucerne, Lake Cuomo, and Amsterdam itself is pre and post on this. Uh, really great cities to see here from Cologne, uh, the Koblenz Rudersheim there in the middle, that's where that middle Rhine Gorge is with the 40 castles. We have an optional excursion over to Heidelberg if you'd like to see that spire. is a great town. Breisacht is right on the edge of the Black Forest, and we offer a couple of optional excursions there where you can go in the afternoon to Colmar, which is a beautiful medieval town, and we have a World War II-centric tour that's at Breisacht too, where you'll see a tour of the Colmar Pocket, and that culminates the spot where where Audie Murphy won his Medal of Honor. Uh, now over to the Danube, our most popular eight day over there is the Romantic Danube that does Budapest to Regensburg. So I like this itinerary and I'll just point out that it does have uh, the pre and uh, it does have a, an additional spot where we're docked on the, in the banks there in Budapest, Vienna and Regensburg. So overnights, I'm sorry, I see that chat here. I just wanna make sure um, there's a question there. Are there tours where you see the Alps? There is a tour where you can see the Alps, so I'll point that out to you in, in just a moment. Um, let's see if we make sure we don't have anyone waiting. Okay, no, no one waiting. All right, sorry about that, folks. So this uh, has those overnights of Budapest, Vienna, and Regensburg, which I really like. It gives you more time to see those big capital cities of Budapest and, and Vienna. So we're seeing Germany, Austria, Hungary, we're going to be cruising in either direction here. You can start in Regensburg, Germany, and then in Budapest. When we're starting in Regensburg, you're flying into Munich, which is about where the word Germany is on the country there underneath Regensburg. And we have transfers that are included when you do the air through Viking and are arriving on your embark day or debark day. Uh, in Budapest, we have a post. You can stay over longer there. We have pre's in Budapest. We have Nuremberg and Prague as pre and post options too. So we're seeing Germany, Austria, and Hungary on this itinerary. And if you can't decide between Eastern and West uh, uh, Europe, this is an itinerary that does a little bit of both. We're doing the Rhine and the Danube, and we tie them in together by a river called the Main. Uh, this is Amsterdam to Budapest or Budapest to Amsterdam. You do overnight in Budapest and Amster uh, Budapest and, and uh, Vienna. So more time in those cities. So we are seeing the Netherlands, Germany, Austria, and Hungary. Pre and post options in Amsterdam, Prague, and Budapest. Uh, the Main River connects the two together. We're seeing Miltenberg, Würzburg, Bamberg. We have an optional tour down to Rotenburg, which is many people consider the, the, the most medieval and best preserved medieval city in Germany. Um, there in uh, Rotenburg, uh, but this is a fantastic itinerary too. So 15 days, uh, we do have free air on this itinerary for 2023 and 2024. So this is one of those itineraries we always do have economy, free economy air through Viking. You can purchase upgrades to Economy Plus or to um, the Comfort class, depending on the airline, what that's called, and also on a business class will have those upgrades available that you can purchase through us. I apologize, folks. My turn my phone off there. So let's talk about the ships now. These are the um, the Viking longships that we utilize on these itineraries we've talked about on the Rhine and the Danube, and on uh, a couple of rivers in France too. We do the Bordeaux region and we do the Rhone in the south of France on a ship like this. We do our Holland and Belgium itinerary. We do the tulips and windmill itinerary that's going to be in the Netherlands too during tulip season. It's all on a ship just like this. It's only 190 passengers. 
It's a very intimate. It is a different feeling than a large cruise with 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 people on it. If your past experience is all large ship ocean cruising, this is the complete opposite. It is your, your intimate floating hotel that's taking you up and down the rivers. Uh, just unpack once and then you're here in your, your ship and, and docking right in prime docking locations. So just four decks in total. Uh, we'll have passenger cabins on three decks. Deck one, which is at the waterline. Deck two, which is halfway up. And then deck three. And then deck four is the open air top. That's where you can see all around. Uh, the back half of the ship is hotel rooms. Uh, that's where your staterooms are. The top, the front half of the ship is your restaurant and your lounge. And the Aquavit Terrace up there at the front, we have a unique bow shape at Viking on our ships. And that enabled us to create more open space up front. And that's a second dining venue. So you can have breakfast, lunch, or dinner up there in the Aquavit Terrace at the front of the ship. It's very relaxed at Viking. You don't need to pack formal wear. Uh, no need for a suit, a tie, or anything like that. No cocktail dresses. Uh, it is very relaxed, so very comfortable. It's Scandinavian design elements. It's understated, relaxed. It feels like home. You can wear jeans, shorts, whatever you're comfortable with when you're going out for your shore excursions or spending time during the day on the ship. We call it maybe a, a, a dress casual or country club casual at dinner. So slacks and a golf shirt or a sweater or a button down for men are all that's necessary. Again, no suit or tie are needed. This is the middle atrium where you come on board the ship. So we're gonna have those passenger cabins back behind us on deck two and three. And you can see stairways going down to deck one. There's a few, a few staterooms down there. Straight ahead on this level is the restaurant. Straight ahead up on the third deck is the lounge. So let's show you both of those. We'll start the restaurant and talk a little bit about food and how it's served here. It's, it's um, open seating during any time you come for a meal in the, the restaurant. So you don't have a signed table. You can sit wherever you'd like. We're going to have a great breakfast with including, including an omelet station where we can prepare any type of omelets for you. There'll be both a daily breakfast special that's usually regional based as well as always available American classics for breakfast. The same for lunch. We'll have some regional cuisine, multiple choices for lunch. Uh, you can order off a menu. There's usually a, 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 a self-serve area for some items, but we're not doing a full buffet base service. You can you can do that. Uh, go get a few items yourself and order most things right from your wait staff. Uh, then it it dinner, it is all going to be waitstaff served. We're going to have multiple courses, appetizers, entrees, desserts, and again, regional specialties for each of those. There'll be multiple choices uh, and always available American classics. We'll have one dinner that we is going to be themed. We'll have one, one evening during your cruise which is themed on an area that you're traveling through. So usually on the Danube, it's a taste of Austria, on the Rhine, a taste of Germany, of course, we're in, in France, it'll be the rivers of, uh, it'll be a, a tour of France, a culinary tour of France, a really great entertainment and food um, from those regions that we're traveling through. This is the Viking Lounge and Viking Bar, very active spot up here. We're going to utilize the lounge frequently during the cruise. We do include beer and wine during lunch and dinner. Uh, for those who like cocktails or like premium wines, like beverages throughout the day, you can always purchase those and charge them back to your ship's account, or we do offer a very economical Silver Spirits beverage package. It's just $25 per person per day for the beverage package if you'd like to purchase that. And that includes the, ups, uh, the, the premium wine list as well as the, the um, top shelf cocktail uh, alcohol there. Uh, this is our space where we'll do a port talk every day. We'll use utilize this space for one lecture during your cruise, for cooking demonstrations, for a regional performance. But every evening there's entertainment from our own singer on board. Uh, this is just a great spot. And uh, depending on what time of year you're traveling, it's always climate controlled indoors here. So that's a big 306 big windows on either side of the ship so that you floor to ceiling, you can see out in either direction. Uh, moving forward to the Aquavit Terrace, this is the very front portion of the Aquavit Terrace is always open air. There is a half of it we can enclose, and that's where the food service is, so we can do a lighter breakfast, a lighter lunch, or the full dinner out here. 
And if you're traveling, my most recent cruise, I did I did a cruise for pleasure too. So not only am I an employee of Viking, I do believe uh, in the company and I love the product and I do travel on it on vacation. So I was cruising on the Danube in August and uh, it was fantastic weather. It was in the, the the seventies every evening, and we just dined out here on the on the front on the front of the ship on the Aquavit ter Terrace every every night. Um, a great spot. Up on the top deck, it's three hundred sixty degree views, so you can see all around up here. If the weather's fantastic, this is a great spot to be when we're cruising through that Middle Rhine Gorge with the castles, or on the on the Danube when we're cruising through the Bacow Valley. A lot of our cruising is done at night while you're sleeping, but there will be some sections on each cruise where we'll have a little bit of day, daytime cruising, and this is a good spot to be to, to see that. Staterooms. Let's talk a little bit about what the staterooms are like. Regardless of class, every stateroom has heated bathroom floors. They have a king-size bed. We can divide into two. We also have a mini fridge right in every cabin. Another difference between river cruising and ocean cruising is you can buy any type of beverage and pour it, including alcohol, bring it back to your stateroom and enjoy it. You don't have to seal it up and wait for you until you get home to utilize that. So there are so many great vineyards, so many great German breweries. Um, um, it's just a great thing that you can purchase that, bring it back. We don't have a corkage fee, so if you've done a tour to a vineyard, on a day of your cruise, you might buy wine that you want to bring and enjoy at dinner. So you can do that. Um, that very easy to do with Viking. So let's talk about our suite levels. We have two suite staterooms. We have the, the Explorer Suites, which are the largest. They're going to have, we only have two of the Explorer Suites. They have a king size bed with a French balcony and then this large sitting room that has a wraparound veranda. Now these cabins are double occupancy, so only two people per room. This is not a sleeper sofa, but this is great if you're traveling with other couples. A lot of our guests will be traveling with friends and family that are staying in other staterooms, but this is a good place to gather. So if you are traveling with a, a group, this is a cabin that's, that's worth considering. Uh, then our veranda stateroom, we have seven of these. These have a French balcony over in the bedroom. And a sitting room here where there are, on the little veranda, there are two chairs and a table. Most guests are going to be in one of the next two categories, though. These are our veranda state rooms. They have full walkout veranda with two chairs and a table there, um, a little more space. You know, river cruising overall, the, the, the rivers, the ships do have to fit through the locks on the river. So just be aware that it is... A smaller stateroom than ocean cruising, but you spend a lot of time in ports of call in the public spaces on the ship, up on that top deck. Uh, you'll you'll spend time in your cabin. I do basically when I'm changing clothes and, and sleeping. Otherwise, I'm in town, in the cities, or I'm I'm up at the lounge or in the restaurant, uh, just enjoying the ship. Now, our French balcony is the next class down. This is going to have. A sliding glass door so if you're not familiar with the french balcony term it just turn your cabin open air you slide that over there's a glass barrier there so you still have you can look out in either direction from your stateroom but there is no walkout veranda and then finally for those who are looking to travel with us at the best possible price we have some very economical prices on our standard staterooms which are all down on deck one they have a window they all do have that window there but you can see the views are not as as grand as the French balcony or the veranda stateroom, which is why I mentioned those are the two most popular stateroom categories. So that's the ship that we utilize on uh, the Rhine and the Danube and others. Now uh, let's move over to Portugal. We have a special ship class we use here. This is on the Douro River. We have four ships there. These are Similar look and feel, but a smaller ship overall. This is just 98 passengers. So very, very intimate here when we're cruising on the Douro. Uh, to talk about some of the other rivers that we we cruise on, we have some exotic destinations you can do with Viking 2. This is the brand new Viking Saigon, which is sailing on the Mekong River. This is what we call a land tour. You do a cruise on the lower Mekong, but you're also visiting Angkor Wat and also Hanoi by way of air and hotels with tours included. Our, our program directors will be with you the entire way. So starting in Hanoi, ending in, in Ho Chi Minh City, 
well, previously was known as Saigon. This is an 80 passenger ship. Kind of looks like a colonial feel to it, but very modern. Just launched in August, so she's brand new. Um, the staterooms are quite large here, 301 square feet for even the French balcony staterooms. Uh, and this is an artist rendering of our new class of ships in Egypt. We also do the Nile River. This is the Aton and the Osiris. The Osiris was actually launched in August. I just don't have a presentation with, the, with an actual picture of her yet. I need to pop, plug those in. I'm really waiting on our marketing department to do so. But this is a 82 passenger ship built brand new by Viking. The Aton will be joining the fleet this coming August. So two brand new ships. We have Egypt on sale all the way out to 2025. The ships here are smaller, so they do sell out quickly. That's why we have so far in advance available to purchase. So 82 passengers. We do two nights in Cairo, then fly up to Luxor, and we'll do the cruise on the Upper Nile, going all the way up to the Aswan Dam and back to Luxor. We'll fly to Cairo and have an overnight there in a hotel. And then our other vessel on on the Nile is the Ra, and the Ra is even more intimate. This is our smallest river ship that we offer, just 50 passengers. So even when completely full, just 50 passengers on the Viking Ra. All right, now let's talk about where else we sail. I've mentioned the Rhine and the Danube quite frequently during the presentation, but I, I did... Uh, you'll see that most of these itineraries are eight days or longer. We don't have anything shorter. Uh, we do have some unique 10 days and 12 day itineraries over on the left hand side in Europe, Holland and Belgium, tulips and windmills. We have a couple of longer cruises. The European Sojourn is 23 days. We have a new itinerary that's not on this list, which does Vienna all the way to Bucharest. That is a 17 day cruise on uh, the lower Danube. So overnighting in Vienna, overnighting in Budapest, and overnighting in Bucharest, so you have time there too. Uh, we do two itineraries that touch on the Mosul River, and uh, that is Paris to the Swiss Alps on the lower left, that's Zurich to Paris, and Cities of Light, which is Prague, Prague to Paris. Those both visit uh, the Mosul River, which is a really fantastic river. I did the Paris to the Swiss Alps itinerary in 2018 with my daughter when she graduated college. That was my, my treat to her. And we had so much fun, just her and I cruising on that Paris to the Swiss Alps. And that is the itinerary. Someone earlier asked a question about where can you see the Alps? And that is a great one, is doing that Paris to the Swiss Alps. We offer an optional excursion between the ship and Zurich, where you'll spend a full day heading to the Alps. You'll visit um, uh, the... Uh, it's... It is Grindelwald, and you'll also visit the, um, um, is it, oh, I forget the first word, it's Frau, uh, my, it's not, um, Frau is the name of the mount, mountain, and I, I've lost it uh, in my, my head here, so it's beautiful, I have a great picture of my daughter and I up there at the top of the, of the, of the mountain. Uh, looking up. So uh, this is other rivers that we do, the Bordeaux region, the Rhone riv River on the south of France, Lyon and Provence. We do the Elba, which is a Prague to Berlin cruise on a, another small ship, the Elba. The vessel there, we just have two sailing on the Elba. They are 102 passengers. Uh, and then we showed you the ship on uh, Portugal and also the Mekong and the, the Nile. And Christmas market versions of our Rhine getaway, our Romantic Danube, and also a couple of other cruises too. All right, the last thing I'll talk about is uh, river cruising closer to home. This is the Viking Mississippi. So I have good news and bad news when it comes to the Mississippi. The good news is we're sailing. We launched the ship in August of last year. Um, it's been an interesting launch because I'm not sure how many of you heard about the low water levels, the historic level on the Mississippi. It hadn't been seen in over 125 years. Uh, but the river's back. The, the the rains that we've had over the winters have helped the river, so we're back sailing again. Um, the bad news is that we've had this product on sale. We launched our Mississippi cruises. We started putting them on sale in April 2nd of 2020. We all know what was happening in March of 2020. The pandemic had just arrived. We all didn't know what our future was. 
So it actually sold incredibly well for last year and this 2023 year. We opened 2024 because we just needed more space to fit people on because there is just one ship on the Mississippi right now. So we are mostly sold out for this year and next year. But if you're interested in Mississippi, I don't want to discourage you. Talk to Teresa. Teresa can check with us at Viking. There are always cancellations. We have people who, for whatever reason, need to reschedule and change their dates. So there are cabins that are opening up here and there. Um, so if you are interested in Mississippi, um, reach out to, to Teresa to, to look at specific dates that we do have available. We'll be opening up the 2025 season relatively soon. I would say in the next few months, we'll um, open up more sailing dates to book for Mississippi. You can already tell it's a bigger ship. Uh, the Mississippi is a wider river. It's a deeper river. The bridges are taller. We don't have to build to the same specifications that we do in Europe. So in some ways, she's more similar to our ocean cruise lines than our river ships. She is 386 passengers, so 386. And you'll see those cabins uh, there in the middle of the ship, decks two, three, and four. That's where most of the, the passenger staterooms are. And we'll use that lower deck closest to the waterline, deck one. That's where our restaurant is, our living room space, our explorer's lounge. And on the very top deck, deck five, you see the back half of the ship. That's all public space, too. That's our Aquavit Terrace. So a second dining venue. We even have a small dipping pool at the very back of the ship where you can sit in and cool off on the Mississippi. And we do cruise the Mississippi year-round. So there is no stop, no, no pause in sailing here. It just depends on the time of year will dictate where we are on the river. So in the, the colder, coldest part of the year, December and January, we're going to be down on the very, very southernmost part of the river. We're going to be sailing out of New Orleans, and it's a round-trip ship itinerary there up to Vicksburg and back to New Orleans. So that's the only itinerary that starts and ends in the same city. So that's New Orleans round trip. Then in spring and fall, we're going to be doing what's our, our itinerary called Heart of the Delta, which is you can go in either direction, Memphis to New Orleans or New Orleans to Memphis. The ship's basically going to be going back and forth up and down the river between those ports of call throughout the spring and the fall. We'll do a 15-day when the river allows us to, so uh, we'll do those in the June, July, and September time frames. That's when the, the water levels are uh, best to cruise on the upper Mississippi. So we do a St. Paul to New Orleans or a New Orleans to St. Paul in that June and, and into July and in September time frame. Then August and the very part back part of July, we'll be doing America's Heartland, which is an eight-day from St. Paul to St. Louis or St. Louis to St. Paul. So those are our itineraries there, uh, but do check with us uh, for availability for 2023 and 2024. This is a look at the Explorer's Lounge. The front of the ship, it's two levels. So lots of space here. Entertainment will be here. We'll have uh, our, a great bar here too with service and, and seating out front on the very bow of the ship, uh, outdoor seating up there. Uh, the staterooms do look a lot like our Viking Ocean staterooms. In fact, they are almost the same square footage. So our veranda and deluxe veranda on our ocean ships are 270 square feet. So the veranda and deluxe veranda on Viking Mississippi are 268 square feet. So that's the one over on the left. We've basically taken the motto, if it's not, not broken, don't fix it, our ocean Ships are amazingly reviewed. People love the, the verandas there, so we've done that same class there. We do have eight cabins that are American Disability Act accessible cabins. Those do have French balconies instead of the rollout verandas. We have some larger suites and, and bigger staterooms too. Again, everything, even our suites, are double occupancy. We don't offer triples or quads. We do have a special going on through the end of the month through January 31st. I don't know yet if this is going to be extended. So right now, my gut feeling is I think it will be. I just can't confirm that it is. We're doing this presentation and, and January 24th is today's date. So we just have a few more days. If you're viewing this after February has switched over, just ask 
uh, ask Teresa if this this special has been extended. But we're doing $25 deposits here in January. Normally it's $500 per person to deposit for a cruise. I'm just letting people know. I mean, it's to me, it's, I know Teresa's seen it. We've seen it. We've had the busiest January of bookings that we've ever had in the same uh, for December. So it's just a $50 risk, even if you think, you know, I want to schedule something for 2024. I may change my mind. I might uh, revise it to a different sailing or something. This is a chance to deposit for just $25 per person. Uh, while availability is good because we are seeing record demand. And then we do have a two week special for today for anyone that does want to reach out to Teresa and book. We'll add a $100 per, per person shipboard credit to the booking. So Teresa will just let me know if you booked within two weeks of this, this call. And we'll and eligible for that. So let me stop sharing my screen now and we'll take any questions that you guys might have. I hope you all found that um, that that useful for you and you some good information. Let's stop sharing. There we go. All right. Are there any questions? Darcy, Fred, do you have any questions? Teresa, anything that um, you'd like for me to cover that I might have forgotten or, or anything to talk, uh, that you'd like to, to add? Fred, go ahead and speak up. Well, I, I would say this has been very, very, very helpful. Uh, my wife and I have never been on a cruise. We've been to Europe many times. Um, and uh, like and four times in the two years before COVID. And then all of a sudden everything stopped. We had four hundred bang, bang, bang every six months. She had a lot of miles to get rid of. Um, so I think we're thinking a river cruise might be the type of thing to try. You know, if it's never for us, it's never for us. But this might be what's you know. I mean, if we never try, we're never going to know. So we we try something like this, maybe an eight day, and and just see. Your hardest decision is where should you cruise. <laughs> Because there's there so many good choices. Um, I can say the Danube and the Rhine are iconic. I mean, they are quintessential, good places to start. Um, but what's on trend right now is Portugal and in Egypt. That's really, I got, I have somebody that's going to Egypt. It's a land vacation. Well, they're doing the Rhine cruise, but not on Viking or they're doing the Nile cruise, but not on Viking, sorry. But we booked it um, like a year and a half in advance and they're going this spring. So mm. Egypt is really a hot destination. And Barry, when are you getting your ships for the, the Nile? When because. The Osiris, the Osiris and uh, the Ra are sailing there now. The Osiris joined the fleet in August of 2022. Now her sister ship, the Aton, is the new one that'll be joining in August of this year. Okay, I was getting ready to say I didn't miss that for some reason because we booked it a year in advance, a year and a half in advance, and it was not an option. And yeah. all of a sudden, it is an option. So, you know, Portugal and, and Egypt are right on trend right now. But if first, if you're starting a river cruise and you want to see historic Europe, um, the Rhine and the Danube are quintessential. I mean, they're they're the go-to's. So, but I do have a question, um, Barry. Can you explain what you do? when you have a drought, because that has been an issue in Europe for a couple of years now. And you guys work around it quite nicely. I'd like to hear how you handle that. Sure. So I'll talk a little bit about how we do it at Viking. The, the, we have a couple of strengths that are in our favor, the, the biggest being the, the size of our fleet. So if I meant, probably remember me, recall me mentioning during the program that we'll have sister ships that leave on a port of call in the opposite direction and you'll pass um you know we low water is completely out of our control we do our uh, we do our best to let you know if we think it's going to happen i do recommend it, it was all over the news of course this past uh, late july and into august there were about six weeks of of severe drought this was an unusual year. This was worse than it usually is. Um, there were a few weeks of water issues scattered last year. Nothing like this. Um, 2021, um, 
uh, I'm sorry, 2020 was actually a great water year, but of course we weren't sailing then because of COVID. 2019 was a good water year, no main issues there. 2018 was another year with drought. But if you do have concerns about low water, if you saw those news articles uh, and the news back in, in this past summer, just avoid late summer. That's my recommendation. We're, we are not going to have low water issues in the spring or, or very early summer. Uh, and traditionally not in the fall either. So that, that late September, October, November, it's unusual to have water issues that do extend that, that difference. We can't predict it, um, but when we do have those issues that happen, that's where those sister ships come in handy. We didn't have to cancel any cruises. Some of our competitors did have to cancel cruises or convert their cruises into motor coach tours because they don't have the fleet size that we have and the flexibility we always have anytime because we have 70 ships in, in on the rivers we have if there is a blockage we have a ship on either side of it so what we're able to do is get as close as possible you do have to pack your bags we'll, we'll take your bags to the new ship you'll go out for a motor by motor coach to do your tours for the day and end at the new ship the ships are identical sister ships so if you were in, in cabin 205 on your previous ship you'll be in 205 on the new ship and your program director will go along with you. Um, so if that's how we handle it. I do have another recommendation to, uh, and Teresa can go over travel protection and insurance products with you. There are others out there. We have our own that we offer too. Obviously, I, I, I don't care what you book. I think it's important to have travel insurance, but the Viking Travel Protection Plan does have a rider that you can purchase that gives you a cancel for any reason. Uh, allows you to just basically say, you know what, I don't want to go. My my cat is sick. I don't want to go. I've heard, you know, the rivers uh, suddenly are, uh, it's not raining in Europe. I don't want to go on this time. It allows you to reschedule your trip for the future. I uh, keep all of your money towards a future trip. That's something to keep in mind, too. Yeah. What right, I have a question. Yeah, just go ahead. Okay, so so speaking of cancellation, so, so somebody books a, a, a ship for a June 1st trip. And on May 25th, calls and says, oh, my God, we can't make it. My cat is sick. Yeah. Um, and I come in and I say, oh, I'll go next week. Um, is there a break in the price? Is there anything to entice me to say, yeah, you know, spend your money on my ship? <laughs> well, at that that close in, we that's where that cancel for any reason rider on our travel protection plan would be the way to protect yourself if you if want to have that type of flexibility to cancel close in for any reason at all literally um so teresa can go over our options as well as other vendors I'm, i was thinking from the other end from the other the other end i'm saying last minute I'm, deals saying, oh, oh you have an opening I'll, I'll take it is there any incentive for me to like to drop what i'm doing this week and go we very i mean to be honest when yeah. you're talking about an eight-day cruise like that teresa can always look but we typically the closest in we'll book anything is three weeks out and and primarily by then we don't have too many cancellations unless it's right. very close in right so so fred i've been doing this for 43 years i have not seen that you would be my first All right. <laughs> I, honestly that would be uh, very unusual especially especially in the times we're living in right now post-covid Travel is in such high demand. It for me, it it mirrors what I went through in uh, 1998, 2000 era. There was a couple of years where it was crazy busy. I would go to bed at 11 o'clock at night, wake up at four in the morning. And I still didn't get it. I couldn't get it all finished. It was just slammed. And that's what we're, that's what I'm going through now. Barry, you're going through that too. The, the challenge, Fred, I mean, it's obvious, it's a great idea. It's like, all right, so we had a last minute cancellation for Viking. They have a room on the ship. The biggest challenge would be getting you to Europe at that point, because the air, the airlines are, are full. Well, they're booked too, yeah. And the price would be much higher on the airlift that closer in. Yeah. So that's, yeah. It's actually wishful thinking, but it doesn't happen that often. Hey, yes, I tried. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you got a good try, but it doesn't happen that often. Last minute deals. Because, um, so. you know, we're at that point in life now where, you know, every day's a holiday. Every day's a weekend, you know. Yeah. So well, you may see some deals, deals from us, Fred, and, and Teresa can look for you. You know, if you have that flexibility to plan, say, between 
you know, at 120 days, like four months out, that's where we may be trying to fill any last minute space. Okay. That's good information. Just FYI, the times we're living in right now, most people are booking their travel about a year to a year and a half in advance. Just, wow. But you can book, you can start planning six months in advance, but it's hard to find something available at a decent price yeah. six months in advance because the demand is so great right now. So, you know... I think what we're living through is post COVID. The pendulum swung one way during COVID. Now it's back on the other way. There's no middle ground. Once we have a little middle ground, it'll kind of settle down and the dust will settle and we'll kind of get a little back to normal. Right now we're not in normal terms. We're in the opposite direction of what 2020 was actually. I think you have better choice when you look further out, you're going to have more sailing dates to choose from, more state rooms to choose from. The closer in you book, the less availability there is, and you're really pigeonholed into what's left. So, yeah. Teresa's trying to communicate. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Sorry. Good. So, Darcy, go ahead. No, I just have two dogs down there that are going, ah. I'm okay, so well, you, okay, well, we're wrapping it up. No, no, don't do that. I was enjoying the conversation. I just, they just like, yeah, well, it's nice to see you in person, Darcy. So we never get to see each other. But anyway, um, thank you very much, everybody, for attending. And if anybody is inspired through this educational presentation, I that's all I'm hoping is get on a plane, go travel, expand your horizons, and be inspired. That's the ultimate goal. So anyway, thank you, Barry, for thank your you. time. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.